Hi, this is Andy. Nice to have you here. Um, I experimented a lot with the far faster frame feature and I built my first frame where you can get the ETH price in USD or in BTC. And yeah, if you press a button here, we get the current price from an Etherscan API and render it on the image. And in this video, I want to show how you can build your own frames. So let's start here with a great start repository for Next.js. It's from Leonardo Sesamia, a staff software engineer at Coinbase. And we can take this repository to build on it. So first of all, we start cloning the repository in a folder. And then I just rename it and cut the connection to Git um, that I can start working with on my own. I cd in the directory and you see it's a normal next app. We have a look at it in VS Code. And um, yeah, we can uh, open here a terminal and install the packages on the package.json. Uh, so you see it's a normal next uh, project. We also have Wheen, which we don't need in this, in this case, but we could uh, do blockchain actions with it. And we have the Coinbase on-chain kit uh, needed for querying information from the user. Um, as you see, we have a layout JS as a normal Next.js application, and we have a page um, TSX file where the app is defined. Uh, let's have a look at the app before we start. So um, we have the frame uh, validator tool and can put in the app here, and we see okay, this is the frame. We have different buttons, for example, story time to external links. If I click on it, um, it tells me okay, this is external and I have this text field here uh, where I can enter text and then I see, okay, this is a boat story. If I click on another time, uh, the image is changing and then the story is not rendered anymore. But uh, it's just a demo project where you can easily uh, build up on. We also have an input field, which we don't need for our app. And yeah, let's have a look at the page TSX and you see here are the buttons, story time, um, the links, the external links. And we don't need the buttons, we want to have our own buttons. And there is the image is rendered and we have the input text. So we don't need the input as well, so I cut it out here. And uh, yeah, I would say we start with the button. So let's define a, a label for the button. Yeah, we, we um, write it current ETH price. Uh, the next button should uh, trigger a post action uh, for the API call USD to ETH and we have action here post. We could also have an action here post redirect. This would be a redirection as we've seen before, for example, to Google. And uh, the next label is ETH to USD and also a post action for my API call. Uh, we don't want to render the park image, we want an uh, ETH image. I um, put it here and down there and then I have already the ETH image uh, generated with JGPT. So here's our ETH image and I can delete these three park images. Okay, perfect. So have a look uh, if we forgot something. Um, so the metadata is uh, just metadata rendered and here um, this is the text which is displayed when we open the web page on next chairs um, or if we click on the frame. Let's have a look at this uh, to, to make it more clear. So we run npm run dev and uh, open the browser. And you see this is the text displayed on the web page, not on the frame. This has nothing to do with the frame. The frame is rendered over the um, options we see before. If we click on the image here in this app, okay, you see it, I click it here and we go to sesamia.xyz. So, um, you can design the page, but uh, I've seen the best practices not to design it. And um, we also have a few uh, warnings here, which we want to get rid of. So first thing is we need a metadata base um, in next here yeah, on not meta meta uh, database, um, or, and we can put in our URL, static URL, or um, yeah, a dynamic URL we define in the config file uh, in the config TS. And then we need a UTF validate to get rid of this warning. And I've seen another warning here where we have the problem with uh, the buffer utils. So let's npm install the buffer utils as well. 
and then we shouldn't get any warning or error or something in the uh, console down there okay npm run dev again perfect you see no error we can refresh and everything seems to work so let's make this our own app um yeah let's take the buttons here and i copy it and we go to slash api slash frame this is where the um, api is in xjs are defined so we jump here to root and we see okay we go go here in the root of the post function and the post function calls here the get response okay and the get response is this api uh, up here and yeah we have some variables defined uh, account and text and yeah we have uh, different things like uh, yeah it's valid it's a message coming from the um yeah coinbase on chain kit where we can get details like the input message or something from the account we can get a lot of information here we don't need the text so I'll cut it out and we go down here and put in our buttons okay we have the three buttons as, as before so our frame is after the click rendered as we had before and uh, now we can uh, use the message object and query the state for example if the current button pressed is three so we define a currency because I want to uh, query USD, USD and BTC. And yeah, it, I just make a little enum here with uh, the currencies. And it says, OK, if we click on button three, then we uh, want to render the uh, BTC. Oh, let's see, um, my arrow here is BTC, not ETH, BTC. OK. Um, and the other button should render ETH. So, okay. Um, we change the image here to ETH image. And uh, our post URL, if we click here, is also the API frame. So we're in a constant loop if, if yeah, you could say so. Um, so, but now we need the logic to uh, finally do something with the information. Okay, we get the currency, we have to put it in somewhere, we get the Etherscan API, for example, and get the price. So we have to work on this function. And I do this because I want to show you that you're not limited to the easy API code. You can call another API within the API and deliver the information back to the front end. So we create our um, create text and image overlay. And um, OK, this was uh, not a pilot. So we need uh, our currency um yeah let's define the enum here again it's okay for for the moment um this time correct with usd and btc and uh, so we get a currency um put it in our asynchronous function and so let's start what do we need we need some kind of etherscan api key um yeah let's define a variable for this And um, yeah, I would say I will make an env file where we store our key. So um, yeah, you, you can just uh, generate the .env.log file and uh, put in here your etherscan uh, key. And yeah, you can get one on etherscan for free, for example. And if you call another API like Coinbase, you can put in a Coinbase API. And here in the documentation of etherscan, we see, okay, if we call, um, the latest price here, we get an object back with ETHUSD and ETHBTC, which you want. So we put in this uh, URL call in our uh, function. Okay, this is uh, great with the, the spacing. Let's make it one line here. And um, Okay, your API key token is um, our Etherscan token, but don't forget to put in your uh, Etherscan API key here because it won't work otherwise. And we need backticks. Okay, so now we have the URL we query, and um, now we will it called try catch block, and we want to fetch uh, the answer of the query, query. And okay, if the answer is wrong, we want to throw an error that we know. Okay, there's something missing. Or forgot our key or something and uh, but if, if we get 
uh, this data, uh, we want to work with the data object. So we want the text currency and now we, we write uh, some kind of um, line uh, check if the currency is USD. We want to get the data object from the result ETUSD. And uh, if it's ETH, BTC or something else, we want to get the uh, BTC. You can see here this exact was want ETUSD and ETHBTC. So let's get this here in our text. And we should have the current um, ETH price in uh, dollar or BTC. And yeah, now we, we want to, to draw some image and put text on the image. Um, first of all, we start to define a canvas, for example. Um, so we, we, need, we need our image for our text. And this image for our text should be uh, the same size as our Ethereum image. So uh, I put in the pixels here. Okay, and that we can import the create canvas we need to install the canvas um, package and then we can import it and now we have our uh, empty canvas with the, the right coordinates we make it a 2d canvas and um, now we can uh, register our font with uh, which we want to paint on the canvas so uh, we need the font here and in public i make a new folder and call it fonts and uh, there we put in a new file. So um, I already downloaded the file. I want to use Montserrat. And we put in the font here in this folder. Okay. Um, I need the name. And we can put it here. And we can put it here. I have to import this, this is also from Canvas. So I don't need to install anything else and I can install my font here. And then I generate my, um, yeah, my, my, my font now, uh, the define, define a color. Uh, we take some, some kind of yellow because uh, we, we need some contrast on the blue background image. And then we, um, yeah, we define which uh, font should be taken and which size should it have. And yeah, then we say, okay, now you can fill this text. And uh, we put in the, the currency and we put in some X and Y coordinates where we want to have this text on our image. That is pretty central. Uh, you can trim the, the text, for example, to have a nicer looking. Um, I didn't do this now in the, in the example, but um, yeah, you could definitely do something more beautified. Um, we define now the image path to our ETH image in the public folder. We need the, uh, the path here and uh, yeah, the current directory uh, from the public and the ETH PNG where we have it. And then we define, um, yeah, an image buffer because we need to have this image in in some kind of buffer and then put it together because we can or we don't want to to save the image somewhere on our uh, local file system uh, we just want to work with everything in memory so we we generate our buffers we put the buffer together and um, compile our new image and then we send this image to front end okay so um let's create a new uh, image buffer and uh, yeah now we we, we take the um, shard package to uh, generate or to overlay our images. Um, we take the ETH image buffer and we composite it with the text we generated before. create a new buffer so our new image now has the ETH image in background and the text in foreground and now we return the text currency and the image buffer and okay we need the, uh, the error handling and um, some kind of okay catch yeah. 
we can console lock some some kind of error or we uh, return potentially an error text which is rendered on the image in case of an error in case of our uh, api doesn't work this you can design it as you want so uh, we want here our just our if image path uh, so the, the empty if image is buffer and in the in the text we we can return an error for example but feel free to design it as you want uh, okay i've seen i need to of course i need here the the path path to the to the font because it won't find it and I think this is just called oh in the back this is impressive and this is just called monster but let's have a look at this later so if it, if it works so okay uh, it looks good so what do we do we we, we draw a canvas and we put our uh, we put our text on this canvas we generate um, a text buffer we don't generate a text buffer I think we need to generate a text buffer okay um sorry for that we we can put it, the text on the image we we need um uh, first of all we, we need uh image type so for our text render our text and image and then we put the Im image together with the sharp package so this means we take this text buffer here and um copy it put it on the composite input so we can render text on image we need uh, this buffer in the image okay so we fill the buffer and not the, the text sorry for that okay then i think we are good to go here and everything should work fine yeah let's jump back to our root we built and uh, implement this function so we need the uh, to import the or to, to get the the values we, we can generate I, I just copied for the um, that we have the right order now we uh, when we call our root we get the text currency and the image from the create text and image overlay function and then we generate here a new image buffer and we put some some kind of information that it's an a bng image and then we can render this image out as a data url and it's pretty cool because um, now we have a dynamic Im image generated and uh, can render it when calling this api um yeah that we use the text currency we can change the label of the button here to text currency for example that we have um, a cool button displaying our currency for example and then so now we, we have a final problem, how do we test this? Because I told you before, we don't see the frame here. Um, yeah, the frame is displayed on the web page. Um, the frame isn't displayed on, on our web page. Um, so we have this config file with the public URL. And if I enter this in the frame validator tool, link is in the comment, comments. Uh, you can see here is the, the frame render, but can't put in the local host somehow, okay? So we need a tool and I used Ngrok, it's free. And you can serve your local apps via a path in the, the internet. Um, and you, you get a domain and you can easily install it with three steps. It doesn't take more than one minute. And you get a domain you can then enter. So you've seen, I've started this and I get this domain. And this domain we can use to open via the ngrok service to get on our page even if it's running on localhost and this domain we take and put in our frame oh you see we don't get our image but buttons are right so what's the problem with our image the image problem is uh, we have the dynamic path defined in the next config and we have to change it now in the new url and then we have our image and can click the buttons and uh, now is something special if you click on get current ETH we will get an error because it timed out next.js for the first render takes more than five seconds this needs a timeout if we press again we're uh, below the five seconds and we get our image beautiful but um we we missed something we had um yeah we had layout so we we need the aspect ratio one one here that it doesn't doesn't make it a bit small we re-render and get current ETH again and you see now we get the ETH price beautiful on the image okay we could have trimmed it and we can uh, click on and then every click we call our 
uh, it scan API, get the information back, render it as an image, and give it back. Yeah, and there you can see if everything is uh, nicely designed. Um, don't forget to to adjust the OG tags like uh, author and, and stuff if you buy something because um, yeah, it's, it's your product in the in the end. And yeah, that's all. I hope I hope you can build cool frames with it. And uh, feel free to reach out to me and ask uh, any questions every time.